When we do IVF, the point is to create good quality embryos in the IVF lab, which means what is not happening in the patient's bedroom or in the patient's fallopian tube, we do in the test tube for five days, which means we create a blastocyst and then we transfer the blastocyst back to the uterus with the hope that that blastocyst will implant and will become a baby. Now, we may be very good at making embryos. These embryos may look extremely good as well. But whether that embryo will implant after we transfer it into the uterus is not something anyone can predict. And the reason for that is implantation itself is a biological process over which we have no control. And the fact of the matter is that nature is not very efficient. Human reproduction itself is not very efficient. And most embryos, whether they're created in the IVF lab or in the bedroom, do not implant and do not become babies. And the reason for that is a lot of them have genetic abnormalities. Now you must remember that there are 30,000 genes and it's not possible to screen for these. And a lot of these defects are random, which means even though the embryo looks perfect, because it has a genetic defect, it will not implant. And in one sense, this is nature's defense mechanism. Then rather than give birth to an abnormal baby, it's better to terminate the pregnancy there so that you do not have to worry about having to terminate an abnormal fetus or have to bring up a baby which has genetic issues. Having said all this, we need to remember that our technology is not very good either for identifying these genetic defects or even for preventing them. Which is why often, no matter how good the technology is, you need to understand that there are lots of limitations. So yes, it's true, we can do what is called PGD or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which seems to suggest that, hey, you can screen the embryo for the genetic defects. But actually that word PGD itself is a misnomer because we're not testing for genes. We're only testing for chromosomes. So it's more like pre-implantation chromosomal screening. And that's easy to do because there are only 23 pairs of chromosomes, whereas 30,000 genes. And this is the problem with PGD, is that you have lots of false positives as well as lots of false negatives, which means the embryo may have a completely normal 23 set of chromosomes, but could still have abnormal genes, which will not allow the embryo to implant. Or what's even worse, that even after implantation, it may end up with a miscarriage. And similarly, unless patients are educated and well-informed, and understand the limitations, they will be very unhappy when the outcome is not good. And part of the problem is doctors don't spend enough time and energy explaining to patients what the limitation of a lot of this technology is. And in fact, lots of them are very happy to do PGD for their patients because obviously if you do additional tests, you can charge a lot more money. And the problem with that is that you also end up wasting and throwing a lot of completely normal embryos. And why do I say that? Because even though the report of the biopsied cells was abnormal, this does not mean that the entire embryo itself was abnormal. And there are lots of reports now of PGD abnormal embryos being transferred and giving rise to normal babies. Because this is a live ball of cells and nature can correct its own errors.